Hello judges, in this presentation, I will be sharing with you about my learning experiences as well as my strategies in this preliminary challenge. So about me, I am Matthew Christopher Tan Ming Wen and I am a secondary tree student from Peihua Secondary School. My team name is PHSS CR7 and my team ID is SG1814. This will be my third year of Coast Space Rescue and these are some of my previous competitions that I participated in prior to this one. So how was the preliminary challenge for me? Well, for me in Coast Space Rescue U19, some problems I found was that my robot could not find objects efficiently, as at low speeds, it would be unable to cover the map quickly enough to find the objects, and at high speeds, it was unable to detect the objects and was very prone to going into traps and hitting obstacles. My solution for this was to create an algorithm that made my robot move in a snaking manner rather than straightforwards. This allowed my robot to cover much ground much more quickly, and thus pick up more objects more efficiently, while still moving slow enough to be able to detect traps and obstacles and avoid them in time. As a result, my robot was able to collect objects faster and thus collect more sets of RGB. This allowed my robot to deposit them quicker and thus create more super objects which greatly increased my score. In conclusion, my preliminary challenge 1 gave me a high score of 2010 points while my preliminary challenge 2 gave me a high score of 1790 points using this method. I will most likely use this method in the future as it proved to be reliable in both maps. So, what is the challenge? Well, in general, the mission is to collect and deposit as many gems as possible in 6 minutes to score the most points. This mission can be broken down into 3 main groups of tasks. The first one is object deposition, the second object collection, and the third obstacle avoidance. By completing these tasks, the mission will be accomplished. After completing the tasks, one way to optimize the program is to add algorithms. This is a list of some of the algorithms I used for the preliminary challenge too. These algorithms optimize different parts of my code. For example, the snaking movement and RGB zone prioritization work towards optimizing my object collection. These are two tools I use frequently to help me when I do my competition. The first tool is the debug function. I use the debug function to find the current value of my variables. This helps me to find out what my robot is doing and why. This is especially helpful when debugging any bugs I have found with my program, as I am able to see what is going wrong and why. The second tool I use is Sticky Notes. I use Sticky Notes, which is an application on my computer, to note down any details on any problems I face. For example, if I am constantly running into traps, I can write that down and check the debug function to see if there's any details on it. If, for example, I have an algorithm that uses a certain variable to avoid traps, I can write down the value of it so that when I'm debugging later, I am able to check it and look at the algorithm to see which part of the sequence it's at and why it is not working. So, how do I implement new strategies? Well, after assigning the algorithms to the correct task group, I will be able to determine which part of the code it should go to. Once I have found that part, I will use the advanced actions and advanced conditions to add algorithms to further enhance my code. Most of these algorithms, if not all of them, require unique variables to work. So I create these variables using the variable creator function in the GUI. After implementing this algorithm, I will then run the code to find any bugs and issues with it. This is as especially often with new algorithms that I've never implemented before. It is typical for them to have issues as not everything works on the first try. So using the two tools I mentioned earlier, I will note down any bugs I find and any problems with it so that I'll be able to debug later. And here is a simplified flowchart version of my snake movement. This is what you will find in the advanced actions of my forward statement. Basically, it is a timer that tells the robot 
to turn left and right periodically at the same duration so that it maintains its forward trajectory or direction while still turning and snaking. This allows it to pick up more objects as it covers more ground. Since this is in my forward statement, you can also use this as an indicator of when my robot is doing something other than moving forward. For example, if you look up in the top right, where my preliminary challenge 2 run is running currently, you will see that sometimes it moves straight, sometimes it turns, but it rarely ever snakes unless it's in a red, cyan, black zone, or it is tracking something such as the deposit or a super object. So, on to debugging. Like I mentioned previously, after implementing an algorithm, especially a new one, it is typical for bugs to occur. So, using the tools from earlier, I will find these bugs by running the code and checking if there's any problems with the sequence. I will then use my sticky note to write it down and my debug function to find out when it occurs and what does it do. I then check what I suspect is the cause of the bug and attempt to fix it. I will then repeat this process and run it again and fix it again until it is completely fixed. And then I will proceed to do this for all my other algorithms to ensure that everything is working as intended. To conclude, overall I am pleased with the results of both the rounds as they are major improvements from my previous scores, especially since these scores were achieved with new algorithms that I had never tried before. Should I repeat this challenge again, I would certainly improve my strategy by implementing more algorithms and perfecting my current ones. For example, I would like to add proximity prox prioritization to the RGB zone prioritization as it is currently rather inefficient and chooses to go to different zones that are further away instead of zones that are closer. For example, if I need red and black to get RGB, I would prefer to go to the one that is closer. So say red zone is much closer than black zone, I would rather go to the red zone first before I go to the black zone. However, my code is set up in a way where it will only go to the black zone and then the red zone. So this would certainly improve it. So about my learning experience. My experience with CodeSpace Robot has taught me very much about coding and how robots function, as well as how to innovate. From this experience, I have also gained more confidence in innovating, as I find that the process of making a new algorithm reflects innovation and it certainly worked well for me in this competition. The most important point that I wish to share with other CodeSpace participants is to try new algorithms and strategies. You can do this in your own free time if you have access to CodeSpace as competition times are rather short so making more complicated algorithms may be quite a struggle as we do not have enough time to optimize fully. And that is the end of this presentation. Thank you all for your attention and I wish all the finalists the best in their finals.